Well, hello there, and I do hope you're all well. Now, did arrogant Tory MP Kit Malthouse actually knowingly mislead Parliament? That was a point of order from Shadow Home Secretary Yvette Cooper after our policing minister... Kit Malthouse had been spouting drivel about uh, how fantastic our extreme Brexit Tory government have been doing and that that war commie party over there that are so unpatriotic and would close down all our prisons and throw you out of your home and uh, replace you with lazy criminal refugees who will rob you blind and destroy your communities. They'd be race written in frogs. Cats chasing dogs, uh, mass hysteria, if they got within a hair's breadth of power. Now, the thing is, after Yvette Cooper dragged Kit Malthouse's flabby frame over the dispatch box and took him to tasks, up steps Rond Ronda's L L Labour MP, Chris Bryant, to throw in a very, very interesting remark after. Enjoy. I think... Uh, Point of order, Yvette Cooper. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. The policing minister told the House that he had only added the several paragraphs launching a political attack, in quotes, at the last minute, and paragraphs that were not included in the statement that either you, Madam Deputy Speaker, or the Home Office front bench were given. However, the list of questions that was circulated to Conservative backbenchers, which I have here, that will have taken some time to prepare and to circulate with input from the Home Office, repeats the same script that the Policing Minister has used in his attack. And, in fact, those questions include nothing on the actual failings in the Metropolitan Police, nothing on the reforms that are needed to the Metropolitan Police or to policing across the country, only political attacks instead. It is not credible that these political paragraphs were only, and I quote, added at the last minute. Did the policing minister give inaccurate information to the House? Uh, well, I thank the um, Right Honourable Lady uh, for her point of order. Um, as I said previously, um, it is a usual courtesy for a minister to give the opposition an advance copy of a statement. The minister has already apologised for adding material to the version given to the um, opposition, but he might like to reflect on the um, point that the Right Honourable Lady has made, and I sense that he wishes to respond further to, further to that point of order. Minister? It's certainly the case that the uh, statement was moving with some fluidity over the last uh, hour or so. Always oh, is, isn't it, apparently? I am sorry if it didn't make it through in its completed terms. I did add a, a number of, of items myself at the end, and it should come as no surprise uh, that the uh, approach in the state was being discussed between us and special advisers. Uh, in future, Madam Deputy Speaker, if there are late changes, I undertake that I will issue a late version of the, the statement that includes all of my remarks. Further to that point of order, if I further to that point of order, to provide reassurance to the House, will the Minister provide the email details and the internal records from his computer and from the computer on which the statement was drafted in order to show at what point this information was added to the statement, just so that we can be sure that the House has been given accurate information? No question. Uh, yeah, I think the Honourable Lady is now having an ex exchange with the Minister as opposed to with the um, Chair, but uh, she has put her request on record. Uh, and it is up to the Minister. It is not really a matter for me. Further I, take that, I take it by that then. No, he won't. I wonder, Madam Deputy Speaker, whether you might have a word with the Speaker, with Mr Speaker about this issue, because I believe that exactly the same process happened in another statement last week, where the Transport Secretary did, um, added a whole load of stuff at the last minute, which was then regurgitated in lots of backbench um, Conservative members' questions to the House. So it was clearly intended, long before it ended up coming to the House, that there was going to be a different statement made in the House than the one that was given to the opposition, and for that matter, was subsequently circulated round the House. Uh, well, I thank the Honourable Gentleman for that 
point of order. Um, the Minister has just given an assurance that um, he will ensure that in future any last minute changes are communicated to the opposition. I hope that the um, uh, Treasury bench will notice what this Minister has said because I know that Mr Speaker um, would wish other Ministers to follow um, that example and I hope that that will be communicated back, back um, to other Ministers and I will ensure that the Speaker is aware of the exchange that has taken place. Thank you. I think Very interesting indeed, yeah. But what do you expect from this extreme Brexit Tory government, eh? Keep Malthouse's feeble apology after it seems to be just that, doesn't it? Just feeble. Especially when Christopher Bryant's remarks about how Grant Chats, or whatever he likes to call himself this week, did last week. But did Kip Malthouse knowingly mislead Parliament? I have my own opinions, but what do you guys think? Right, I shall leave the video here. Until the next time, I shall bid you farewell and um, take care.